Hey everybody, welcome to another episode on Forging a Nation here in Iceland. We have got a foot in the Europa League quarterfinals once again. We're playing against a team who we have beaten twice in a row now. Um, we beat them in the groups, like the, the league face, and we beat them away from home. So let's see if we can come back to Iceland, get the job done, and uh, get our place in the quarterfinals booked once again. <laughs> Yeah, hi everybody, welcome to today's episode and um, I think just before we get into the game I should quickly try and fly into it with the transfers. I think I did touch on some of these last time, I can't quite remember but um, I'm just going to quickly just show you some of them because there are some new players who have joined as well. As you can see we spent 4.4 million so far, we did manage to raise a little bit of money through sales, some of these players are on installment packages as well. So um, the first one that we brought in on a free was Ezekiel Capacho. Um, He's six foot seven with a jumping reach of 19. His heading typically is seven, but I just thought he seemed like an absolute unit to have at the back. So we brought him in, basically. He was a free signing, so he's someone that we brought in. We're trying to get him out into the loan farm, but his sort of ability rating has, has bumped up quite a bit. So I don't know if clubs are going to be put off by trying to bring him in on loan because I think he'll probably turn him down. But generally, he actually looks quite a good player. So I'm quite optimistic that he could turn into a useful little option for us. Ramon Martinez is another free signing. We made 18-year-old goalkeeper. He has actually gone out uh, into the loan farm already. So high hopes for him that he will develop out on loan. May turn into a useful keeper to us, but hopefully will continue to be a useful option out in the loan farm. Um, Josh Rowley, he was someone we brought in from Hibs. Purely a loan farm signing, to be honest with you. And he is already out on loan. But he's only 18 and he's already got some a few decent little attributes in terms of mental and physical. So who knows what's going to happen with him. But so far, he, he's out on loan at Valor Ekjevic. Uh Julio Carrasco is also out on loan. Another free signing. Basically, purely a loan farm player. We will get him for free. He had a two-star rating. That seems to be pretty consistently good for getting players out to the loan farm with that level of rating he's both footed as well he's actually generally quite a useful useful little player probably won't ever be at that level for us but hopefully who knows if he develops well enough he might be but hopefully he'll just primarily be a loan farmer um Jacob goran is someone who we signed actually with a view to him being good for us uh we will hopefully use him like we did with Laji Terreri. He's still got a little bit of development to do. He's a left winger, gives us a little bit of, bit of options out on, on that wide uh, that wide left-hand side. Really good crossing. Can't really finish that well, but otherwise his, his um, physicals and his crossing ability and his technique are pretty good. And with that determination of 17, I'm hopeful that at the age of only 18, he will push on. Uh, Lennon Troyer, I think he was also purely just a lone farm player with currently not got him out on loan but he was signed basically just to be a, a loan farm option um daniel Mbala is someone who i think could actually be really good for us he's only 18 angolan um really really good technicals to play in that midfield we are working on training him to be able to do a bit more of a, a deeper role because we don't currently play a 10 but again he's someone we are trying to get out into the loan farm um boyan iliev has gone out on loan i think he's at i want to say Starnin. Uh, brought him in from Hamburg, as you can see, 550,000. Uh, Adi Besic is a really good looking uh, midfielder as well. Um, we've spent a fair little bit of money on him, bringing him from Slavia Prague. Was it Slavia? Yeah, Slavia Prague. Yeah, a million pounds, but we're also trying to get him out onto the loan farm. Um, but he looks like he could actually be a, a really good option. Basically, with like, players like Lucas Schmidt are like 20, uh, he's 27, Abinho is 27. Um, and we've just rejected a bid from Sao Paulo for Abinho. It was way below his value, but if we start getting more bids like that, who knows, we, we may be tempted to sell him. So some of these loan farmers who are actually potentially going to, you know, have a future at the club are, are going to maybe find themselves thrown in sooner rather than later. Miroslav Bednar, um, we've managed to get him out on loan uh, into the loan farm, but he's someone who I think could potentially be a good striker option for us in the future. Uh, Nicolo Boyk, uh, if that's right, or Boyk. Uh, Belgian uh, can play central midfield or number 10. He was trying to get him out into the loan farm, but he's someone we saw a while ago and his value was like 10 mil or something like that. He was from Club Brugge. I think we saw him about a season ago when he was playing for the uh, Belgian under 21s um, and um, his value has dropped massively to the point where we could bring him in for, well, 1.3 mil, so literally almost like a tenth of what he was last season. And then Ero Karawan, Karawan. Um, again, was someone who we'd, we'd sort of been watching for a while and um, he was transfer listed by request because he wanted a new contract at his club. 
um, and we managed to, to bring him in um, and he is currently wanted actually by Greta so hopefully he's going to go out to the loan farm soon as well but um, potentially a good little 18 year old option can play both sides and can play um, like as a, as a six uh, just needs to work on that left but I think if he's going to be a bit more accomplished on that left hand side but obviously could potentially invert but it's passing not ideal for that um, but yeah 220k brilliant um, the main outs we've had Fana Frey Jönsson and Marco Farinelli have gone to Braitha. I can't remember if I touched on Lamar Johnston last time. I think I did. Yeah, he went to he went to Genoa. Um, yeah, we managed to get a bit of a bidding war going for him and managed to get a little bit more money for him than we were sort of anticipating. So that was nice. Um, otherwise, they are the main ones. Basically, we've been trying to get the loan farm back up and running and we have managed to do so. We're currently on, I think, 22 players out, 23 players out on loan, but there are a few more in the pipeline slash pending um, so, um, Talik Manidis is actually out on loan, um, so uh, he went to, I want to say, Stanen or Hafnerfjörde, and Breitha keeps trying to buy Adrian Carrillo from us, so he was out on loan at Hafnerfjörde, he came back, and I am optimistic, actually, that he's going to be a useful player for us going forward this season, he has already started to feature, but they keep trying to buy him off us for, like, in the last bid we rejected, as you can see, it was 875k. I think he's going to be worth a lot more than that, if we can start using him like I plan to in the next, sort of, season or two so yeah that's why we're kind of keeping hold of him for now before we get into the rest of the video everyone if you want to do us a massive favor and drop a like down below so yeah obviously i saw you last time in the rangers game and then showed you that slavan Bratislava result um yeah lead ended up um we went behind then took the lead and then conceded a really late goal uh, and then it's kind of just been plain sailing in the cup as you would expect and we are into the semi-finals against hk which we will certainly fancy ourselves to do so but uh, meanwhile as for the europa league so we did beat celtic away from home 2-1 um they got a penalty right towards the end and um yeah realistically it would have been nice to have sort of kept that two goal cushion we did have chances to add to it we just couldn't quite get that third goal but you know what we'll take it away from home and um, to come to come back to iceland with a 2-1 advantage we'll be quite happy with um but we are unfortunately now on our own in european competitions because braitha i think they got screwed over by scheduling a little bit to be honest with you so if we look at their schedule um so they did really really well they came i think it was 14th wasn't it in the end in their conference league um and then they blew past pecci uh 6-1 on aggregate um and then they drew two all at home to brighton which i thought brilliant especially considering brighton scored like in the 94th minute with a penalty so probably like last kick of the game and then they played starn in the cup on the tuesday and then had to go to brighton on the thursday and try and get a result and they lost 2-1 which i think you know what isn't terrible like Nicholas Becker didn't have a great game. He's on loan at Braitha from us, but I think if they'd have just not had this game, they they may have they may have done a lot better. I don't know, but I just felt like it was really harsh uh, expecting them to play two days after that. But thankfully, despite our early concerns, we are actually building on an epic season last season, and we look like we could actually potentially surpass it. We're on eleven point two five points at the moment, which puts us on forty one point seven five for next season, which will see us leap above all these four teams. Um, all the way up into what's that 15th um, and we could potentially catch us no Denmark as well oh actually we will go above Switzerland so we could potentially be on course to jump up six places up into 13th um, which would be incredible now for the game against Celtic without a few key players Snorri Svensson and Oscar Ragnarsson are both suspended after picking up too many yellow cards um, and so we're having to play Lindstrom and we're playing Matt Lou at left back. Now, he is someone who has been out on the loan farm and will be open to getting him back out onto the loan farm. But equally, he has the potential to definitely do a job for us. He is arguably technically better than Ragnarsson in a lot of ways in terms of going forward. He's just maybe a little bit less secure at the back. Like Ragnarsson's marking and tackling is generally a little bit better. But Matt Lou is certainly perfectly capable of coming in and, and doing a job for us. Um, as is Lindstrom, now... If we get through and hopefully we get another registration window, I will be looking to register players like um, Carrasco, who has been playing at centre half for us in the little pre, the little cup beforehand. Um, he is someone who was out on the loan farm and potentially would go back out onto the loan farm this season. But equally, if he sticks around, I'll be more than happy. Same with Hector Barrios. Um, so yeah, we'll certainly see what we can do there. 
as you can see, suspended, injured us. Uh, Kevin Oviedo uh, tore his hamstring out last time out, which was very frustrating. Um, he is someone who I would be definitely looking to use in today's game if he was available because this Celtic back line, three of them um, are like over 33, where well, they were last time we played them anyway. I assume they'll be picking a very similar lineup. And then it's uh, Abinho in alongside Lerva, just because Matuk is um, just coming back from injury. And uh, Lerva has been brilliant. That's why he's playing over Schmidt. Plus, obviously, Schmidt also isn't quite ready to go. Stojanovic on the right, Nigor on the left with Umukans um Umquitnazi up top, but we do have Swaj on the bench who can play through the middle if needed as well. He did get a hat-trick last time out in the cup, so it was a bit of a toss-up between picking him or Umquitnazi, but Umquitnazi is a little bit quicker. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the side does kind of pick itself, Mashuka and Ongoy. Uh, Mashuka, who knows, we may be seeing a point in the season where Carrillo potentially takes his place, but... Uh, for now, Machuca is just going to stay. He's, he's brilliant. And we've got Terrera on the bench who can absolutely tear it up. Um, you could easily make a case for him to start. Um, just Nigel just has that little bit more composure up top. So, narrow advantage here against Celtic. We'll certainly be looking to get the job done. Um, let me just check the situation with that, that back line that they've been running um, and just make sure everyone is having their respective jobs done on them. So, interestingly enough, they're not playing... He's not even on the bench. Uh, they had a striker. I can't remember his first name, but his surname was Laird. And he has scored against us in the last two games. He scored the penalty last time, and he scored against them when we played them in the league phase as well. So I'm kind of glad to see he's not playing. Uh, Stephen Welsh is a new gen. Oh, no, he's not. But he is 36, and he's got very little pace. He's got a decent first touch, but very little pace. So I think we can potentially afford to close him down because he's probably going to struggle to get around us. Matt Stewart, is he the new gen? He's 26, so again, poor first touch though, so we could probably get someone just to like mark him quite tightly. Um, now, Vrocki, I think, is 33, 34, but he's also 35. Um, so we will probably just keep an eye on him um, in terms of going forward. Just leave it as it is for now. And Ross Graham, I think, is 35 as well. So um, this is where having the likes of Oviedo, etc., is really handy because um, they're rapid and they can just get in behind them. But interestingly enough, like we played our normal game last time and we, you know, went 2 0 up, you know, within sort of 20 minutes. Um, but then when I sort of just double checked everything in terms of personnel for Celtic, we went more long, more direct to try and get in behind them. It didn't really work out quite how I expected it to. We just sort of didn't really create anything tangible. We didn't really get in behind loads and stuff like that. So um, one thing I do need to check, make sure we're doing it. Yeah, we are putting pressure on that sort of slow old back line. Um, I say old, I am 34 this year, so I'm not much younger <laughs> than the, some of the players we're up against. Um, but yeah, you, you know what I mean? Hopefully we can look to sort of put them under a little bit of pressure because we have got a very dynamic Front three in Stojanovic, Nygaard, and that's a penalty, surely. No. Like, how many tackles there? Like, and I felt like Stojanovic was expecting the penalty because he did stop. And I must admit, so I was expecting it. But it's 1 0. Umukunazi scores, and inside five minutes. Last time he scored inside about a minute and 40 seconds, and he's gone in a put us ahead on the night uh, and given us that two goal, well, restored that two goal advantage on the tie nice and early. Um, we just kept the pressure up, and that is what I am wanting to see. It actually took a deflection off the defender and went into the roof of the net. That's quite funny. But already got a 0.86 XG in 10 minutes, um, which is perfect. Nice nice early goal to settle the nerves and uh, sort of keep Celtic at arm's reach. Um, at arm's reach? At arm's length. Arm's reach is more being wanting to be closer to someone. Arm's length is anyone further away. Mad, isn't it, how they both applied to the same thing? It was the same distance, but different perception. I don't know why it's doing that laggy thing again. Hopefully it stops. I've noticed it's a little bit hit and miss sometimes. Don't know why. I don't know if it's because I've got quite a few graphic packs running or not, or I'm not sure. But yeah, the bids from Saudi for three of our players, like uh, Diallo, um, Ungoy, and Unkunati, have sort of died down a little bit. We had a couple of bids for Unkunazi and he wasn't that bothered from what I remember about going. 
Diallo did want to leave, but we managed to agree that we'd sell him if like 2.7 mil bid came in, which hasn't come in yet. Um, so he he's staying put for now, um, which we're obviously very happy about. That literally could have gone anywhere, but we have got the beating of this back line. And um, we brought, I feel like we brought Trifonov on against them as well. And he, he had a good time, as did Torreira, just because they are really, really fast and athletic. Just, just should have just put the ball in straight into the box then, but oh well. Well, obviously, getting the win here, if we can, is going to be great for coefficient points as well. Um, and then we will have to draw the quarterfinal pretty much straight after this, assuming all goes to plan. Oh, and it's 2-0. And Diallo, speak of the devil, has gone and smashed one in to put us 2-0 up on the night. Keeper did get a hand to it, I think, but it was just, he just hit it too hard with too much venom. Just went straight past him. And is this going to be a third goal? I think he's going to be offside. No, not, he's not offside. I usually find they're offside when that happens. Stojanovic is having such a good time against this defence. Oh my word, another deflected effort from Stojanovic, which once again could have easily gone into the back of the neck. Back of the neck, back of the neck. The keeper had to tip it over. Lerva floats it in. Keeper does come out and claim it. But a very nice first half of football so far. Lovely, 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 lovely. So we will obviously be looking for more of the same. Um, and yeah, assuming all goes to plan, it'll be another quarter-final appearance of the, in the Europa League after last season. Really sort of built on that, which has been absolutely fantastic to see. Um, I was really worried that based on how the like preliminary qualifying rounds went um, with like Hafnerfjörde, Valerakovic, um, that we might struggle really. Obviously, Braitha kind of pulled through a little bit and you know managed to get out of their league phase and and won their playoff and obviously picked up some points for the draw against Brighton. Um, so for, for a time, I was really worried we, we were going to essentially only get like half the points that we got in last season. But we really sort of pushed on and looked set to beat it, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and obviously the dream really would be to try and get back into the Champions League. Oh, and it's 3-0 and it's Lerva. Uh, Stojanovic is just having an absolute blast against their, their left back. Uh, he's just causing them all sorts of problems. Is that two assists for him tonight? Um, yeah, look at him. He's just They just can't cope with him. Absolutely cannot cope with them. And like honestly, wait until we bring on like a Terrera or a Trifonov as well, there because they're equally as quick, like we said. Um, yeah, obviously the dream would be to you know get back into the Champions League proper and do some business there, but equally, like... You know, we could go into the Champions League, obviously get the money and the sort of um, rep boost. Oh, that was pretty, pretty poor. Um, get the rep boost that goes along with that. But equally, like in terms of actually what we are achieving, obviously we're winning games in the Europa League. So we're getting the prize money for winning games as well as the coefficient points for the progress. So it's whether do we sort of just wait, at, well, I say wait, but, you know, sort of, be content to stay in the Europa League as a Europa League team for the time being. That should have been a goal. He sort of dicked around and zigzagged all over the place on his way. Then he should have put his head down and ran. But anyway, um, it's whether we just are content to stay a Europa League team and keep sort of essentially stat padding, really, I guess is what we'd call it, um, and get as many points as possible out of this competition until we are more of a sort of complete Champions League team. Um, I mean, it's been like, what, two seasons since we've been in the Champions League now, so we don't actually know what stage, you know, how competitive the squad would be um, against some of the teams that we would likely come up against. You know, if we could be in a point where we could get get 
good save from Valson where we could, you know, comfortably get out of the of the league phase. I, I'm not sure, but who knows? We might find out next season. Um, maybe bring on Ahmad, Rabinho, leave Triffin off for now. Yeah, leave it at that for now. <laughs> but let's face it, this game's done now. 5-1. And realistically, we should be winning winning this tie as well, this like, individual tie. But yeah, uh, for the coefficients, which would be beautiful. Everyone's performed really, really well, to be fair, I think. I don't think anyone's really had a bad game. <laughs> nice. Oh, and it's another assist for Stojanovic. And I was actually going to bring on Suarez for Unquinazzi at some point, but now if I, I need to wait for him to get his hat-trick, otherwise I'm going to get asked to... Oh, yeah, why, why are you waiting to get his hat-trick? Um... Yeah, such an annoying question. But, um, you know what? Hopefully he gets it early and then I can bring Swaj on. It's 4-0, so I think I've got a youngster on the bench which will keep some people happy if I bring him on, and that's Greta Raffin-Eljan. Um, and I think I'm going to bring on Trifonov for Stjanovic now. And is, that will take us, what, onto four subs? Leave it, and then I'll probably bring Carrillo on for Machuca. I should just do that now. Just do that now as well. What an emphatic result! This is four 0 at home to Celtic. Wow, That's how far we've come, or how far they've fallen? I don't know. Because, like I said, you know, for a lot of the time, it's actually been Hibs in the last few seasons who've been doing really well and they've been winning the league and getting into the, the Champions League. Um, the old firm seems to have really sort of dropped off a little bit. And it's Trifonov and he finds Terrera and it's 5-0 and that combination that we brought on literally to, to cause more issues to this defence has combined pretty much as soon as they've come on. And that was incredibly easy for, for them just to waltz through that back line. Um, Trifonov, no issues, swept it across and Terrera was just there with probably one of the easiest goals he'll ever score. If we make it six, I'm going to be astounded. What an absolute demolition job. Looking pretty solid. Come on, wake up. I don't know whether he was deliberately just slowing himself down and threw him off, I don't know, but I wish he would have just got hold of it a bit quicker. <laughs> I mean, I keep forgetting Lerv is only 23 as well. We were talking about the midfield before. He's literally only 23. We gave some game time um, in this sort of group stage of the, the cup to... That Daniel Bjornsson, who we were talking about last time, he'd come back on loan from his loan at um, Fjellnir. Um, but we did actually decide to loan him out uh, again. He's gone to Greta this time um, just because he's going to be seen as an important player there. And I feel like right now, I want him just to be playing week in, week out. Um, whereas if he was going to be here, he's going to be competing with Schmidt, Abinho, Lerva, Matuk. And I just think there he is going to be playing hopefully all the time. Um, don't get me wrong, he, he is definitely going to be, I think, have a future role in our midfield. We just sort of need to sort of phase some of these more older established players out, which hopefully will happen quite organically. It has been interesting in a few of them, like Lerva in the past, Matuk in the past, Abinho. Um, so, yeah, we'll be open to sort of moving a few of them on eventually um, uh, and to make way for some of the sort of younger heads. 
Oh, and they've got, got a goal back. Decent little goal, to be fair. Decent run, decent finish. Um, but, yeah, 5-1. Probably the last significant moment in the game, really. So it's going to be full-time now. Should head that away. Well, it's gone out. Oh, Valson claims it. And um, that's full-time. Um, absolutely brilliant result. What was even better was we had... Turkey and um, Denmark losing teams, Michelin and Galatasaray both got knocked out at that round. So that is really, really good for us um, because now, how many points are we on? So we're actually on 11.75 points for the season. Um, and yeah, that will see us. Just, they obviously had someone go through in the conference, even guessing, but keep in touch with Denmark, still due to go above Switzerland. So. Austria might be a little bit of a bridge too far, although they did just lose Rapid Wien. So who knows, uh, but going to be some brilliant gains regardless. So let's see who we're going to get. So we are on this side of the draw. Um, so we are going to be looking at avoiding... Oh, I don't think it's... Is it not seeded now at all? It just... Anyway, I want to get Casapia. I don't want to get Genoa. I didn't want to get Ajax. I don't want Napoli. I want Casapia. Yes! I was asked who I wanted in the next round of the draw, and I said Castle Pier, and we've only gone and got them. Don't get me wrong, they are a decent team. They are in the Europa League, but I feel like out of the other teams that were in there, they probably represented the best chance of us getting some sort of points. Because we didn't have the Portuguese loaded, we don't have everything available, like managers and stuff like that. And what do we actually have in terms of players? I don't know. Oh, we've actually got managed to get got a full, full player uh, roster. Um, so... Let's see, I mean, this guy, he he looks incredible. Maki Loppi, finishing minimum of 18, first touch of 17. He looks phenomenal. Fair play to them. What's this guy? Okay, nothing brilliant. We've got better players than him. What's their defense like? Who are we going to be going up against? Also, e equal, equal to that, equal to that. Probably equal to him. Equal to him, I would say. Yeah, I, I did think they would probably represent the, the challenge that we would want at this stage with a view to getting through. And um, hopefully that proves to be the case as we are playing them in, what, three, four weeks in the quarterfinal first leg. I reckon I reckon we've got a reasonable chance of getting through to the semis. Um, but let's see, who, who else is going to be kicking on? So Braga, Sausage, Genoa, Ajax. Napoli Spurs. It's good that we're losing a Napoli and or like a Napoli or a Spurs, and we're losing a Genoa or an Ajax. Um, I think is good going. I feel like when we play, I'm sure we played Braga before and they beat us. Um, where can we see past meetings with Braga? I remember where you find it now. Can't remember. We've lost to them, but I feel like we've also maybe beaten them. I can't remember. Are we going to get the semi-final draw here? Yeah, we are getting the semi-final draw, actually. So, who if, if we get Casapia, it's going to be Spurs or Napoli. Right, okay. But obviously, we've got to get Casapia first. So, yeah. Wow. And that prize money is going to come in very, very handy because as we're, at, we're actually in debt. I'm not quite sure why. The club has upgraded training facilities and youth facilities, um, but our expenditure has been... Quite high. I'm not sure if that's purely based on, on the transfer expenditure we've done, to be fair. But with the, the prize money, I would expect this to quite easily sort itself out without any issues. Um, but yeah, hopefully that will start, start coming in clutch soon. So and with that, I will leave you for now. I'm going to try and uh, retain this, this cup again. And uh, and then I will see you for the second leg of the quarterfinals against Casa Pia. I'm pretty sure we're at home, actually. Yeah, we are at home. So once again, another bumper game in front of the home crowd. Hopefully, we'll be in with a chance of getting through to the semi-finals of Europe League. Fingers crossed, everyone. I'll see you all then. Thank you once again for watching. Take care. Bye for now. Much love.